Welcome to Nursing 234. And this course is the beginning of surgical nursing. And we'll be talking about conditions of the integumentary system, gastrointestinal and the endocrine systems. I am hopeful that you will enjoy this course as is the foundation for surgery or surgical care. This 234 also has an additional load where we'll be discuss, discussing cancers and also talk about other issues connected to surgical nursing such as inflammations, burns, pain management, etc. So be confident that at the end of the semester you'll be well grounded to move on to level 300, 333 and 334 which are the other two surgical nursing courses for your program. So the first session of your course outline talks about historical perspectives of surgery. We talk about some prefaces or surfaces that are used in surgery and how these words uh, are explained. We also talk about types of surgery and at the end, I'm sure that because you are already nurses, some of these things will be very, very familiar to you. So I also encourage you to read on your own. This course, if you don't read on your own, it will be difficult for you to grasp everything because the course outline is very lengthy. So you need to read on your own so that you will be able to survive the, the semester. When we go down memory lane in terms of history, we are talking about how surgery began. And we all know that way before Christ, surgery was done. The ancient Egyptian surgeons started working on wounds, suturing, and managing fractures, etc. And then when you also talk about history, you can't talk about surgery without talking about pain management, control of bleeding infections. So you would notice from the slides that you come across things that talk about the fact that those days the patient could bleed to death or they had so much infection and had other complications and then there was no anesthesia before um, it was discovered in 1846 so surgery was done without adequate pain control and because of that we pride ourselves these days because there's so much improvement in surgical technology where now endoscopic surgery and other uh, complicated ways of managing patients surgically have helped us to um, do surgery with minimal invasion as much as possible. So now surgery is, should I say, is fairly safe depending on what is wrong, what organ is being operated, and what a patient's pre-surgery physiological status is. So the diethyl eater that was used to anesthetize patients was discovered in 1846, like I mentioned, and chloroform in 1847. Now in Ghana, we had surgery in our colonial days. So we had foreign surgeons coming in to help us. Uh, we also know that our traditional contest, people were circumcising children, tribal marks, and all that. They were doing it without aseptic technique, so our people were having a lot of infections those days. But now, thankfully, we have surgeons that have been trained to meet international standards. So in Ghana, we have a lot of 
and we have made a lot of progress as in specialized surgery and general surgery. One of credits to mention is the National Cardiothoracic Center, which treats patients from across Africa, and we have a lot of specialist surgeons in the country. And then also, we also have a um, perioperative nursing program as a specialization at the Kolebu uh, Nursing and Midwifery Training School. That's where the school is located. So if you're interested to be a specialist surgical nurse, you should be able to, um, after your degree, do that. And then later, when the course is introduced at the Ghana College level, um, you can also continue in that domain. Just note that the post-basic programs, including the perioperative uh, training, has been affiliated with University of Cape Coast. So they are going to award degree um, to the students after the program henceforth. So it is good you have another degree in surgical nursing if that is what you want to do. Surgery in Ghana is performed both at the governmental, government hospitals and private hospitals, that we all know. So I want to move on to, uh, I encourage you to read about the surgical, uh, the history of surgery on your own. The area of prefaces and surfaces is also something that is very, very familiar to you. In surgery, we use a lot of technical language so you have to familiarize yourself with some of these. And I've taken the trouble to put some of these words in a table for you in your slides. So I refer you to go to your slide on Sakai so that you can um, review these. Now, when you have a, a, a preface like angio, it refers to blood vessels. So you have angiography, which is an examination, x examination of the blood vessels. Encephal refers to the brain, so encephalitis, encephalopathy, etc. Corpo refers to the vagina, lamino refers to the vertebrae, etc. So I have a, a number of these uh, prefaces for you um, that I refer the, you to in, the, um, in your slides in Sakai. Then we'll come to surface, surfaces. Surfaces, um, I brought a few of them also in a tabular form for you. For example, if a ectomy is a removal, surgical removal of something. So the preface is before the stem word, the surface is after. So mastectomy, removal of the breast, you know. And oma refers to tumor, so hepatoma, hepato. Hepa is liver, so oma, tumor of the liver. And so, um, again, please try and be familiar with some of these words, and uh, you will enjoy using them. Then we also um, talk about terminologies commonly used in surgery, and what do we do? We, we do a lot of things related to um, IND, incision and drainage, and other surgical procedures. So you need to know common technologies that are used in the theater, the recovery ward, on the surgical ward, surgical OPD, etc. So you are working in that environment. You will be able to um, appreciate what is being discussed. So I also brought a lot of, of them in the slice. For example, aneurysm referring to the dilatation of the artery. And you'll be talking about um, aneurysm in lesson 333, yes, 333, next semester when you go to level 300. So um, just know that you, it's not all of them that you meet in this um, semester. For the three courses that you have to do for surgery, you miss most of these words. So cutaneous refers to the skin, um, abscess, of course, a, a pass or um, a collection of pass. Then you also have um, embolus, which is a clot that is circulating in the blood. 
hemorrhage, um, bleeding, etc. So, what are the types of surgery? We have basically two, principally, which is emergency or planned. However, if you read other sources, you come across semi-elective. So, an emergency surgery is one that is necessary, is time-bound, the life is at stake. So here and now, you have to rush me to the theater to sort out whatever is wrong with me. The plan schedule elective, as they call it, is, well, I have this condition, and without the surgery, I'm okay, I can still live. But then it is important I do it along the line so that it will not lead to any further complications. So they take their time to schedule the surgery and then I also go in and do it. The semi-elective must be done to avoid permanent disability or death, but it can be postponed for a short time. The emergency cannot be postponed. The planned surgery, there's no pressure. You take your time when you are ready. The semi-elective is the one that you have to do, but you don't delay it for too long because if you don't do it, there can be some damage or disability. Then we also classify surgery as either exploratory, therapeutic, reconstructive, palliative, etc. So the first three are related to time agency. Now the types again relate to the purpose. So if you are doing an exploratory surgery, it means that you don't know what is wrong. You can't hold, hold it. So you open up to check. Then you have the one that you are doing it to treat. So you have an appendix, you are removing the appendix, you are treating me, so therapeutic. I have um, an enlarged thyroid gland with maybe high level of tyrosine. So you are taking either parts or all the thyroid gland out is therapeutic. So you have those ones. And then you also have reconstructive, where you have something that is not aesthetic or there's a deformity. You want to uh, make it look aesthetic, make, make, make it look nice or make it functional or something like that. We call it reconstructive. You are reforming something. Then you also have surgical procedures that you have to cut something off. You call it amputations. So you can cut the limb, the finger, an extra finger or something. And you also have transplant surgeries where you prepare my body enough, check whether we are compatible and all that, remove the disease organ and give me a new one. So all these are in the language of types. Then we also have types relating to the body parts. So like I mentioned, thyroidectomy, the neck. You see that the words, you can't change. You can't use any other word. That is why your preface, surface, and terms used in surgery is a foundation. If you are not sure of these, then progression in surgery becomes difficult. So please take your time and do know your prefaces and surfaces. So when you are using the words, you use it with the confidence that is deserved. So the thyroid gland, the adoptomy, um removal of the stomach, either partial or total gastrectomy. Then you also have types that relates to invasiveness. I mentioned from the beginning that with modern technology, we have been able to uh, com come up with, let's say, gadget equipment 
that you don't need to cut my body open before you operate me. So when you have surgical procedures that you use a laparoscope or you use any endoscopic um, such a, or equipment, that type of surgery is called laparoscopic surgery. So you can do laparoscopic surgery in the chest, the abdomen, and any other part of the body once the technology is available. And then we also have what we call the laser surgery. And this uses light to perform the surgery. And it's also a minimally invasive surgery. And we also have what we call microsurgery. Microsurgery, laparoscopic surgery kind of relates because you, you do the microsurgery, the equipment that are used it helps the surgery to see at a microscopic level. So as part of the surgery, uh, tubes are connected to an equipment that the microscope enlarges whatever um, is being done for the surgeon to see so he can cut things off as necessary. And the last one is robotic surgery, where um, complicated machines are used to augment the surgery. So for this initial session, it's about terminologies, it's about history, it's about making sure that you can, you can fit within the context that this course um, brings to you. So um, some references for you to um, read as you go along your program.